ostentatious in a category that already leans ostentatious. But I've been having some pretty good, good luck lately with a couple of speeches out of Shakespeare that are delivered by the historical characters of Mark Antony and Henry V. These are, of course, fictionalized versions of speeches that were once actually given, but at their heart there seemed to be something about the intense commitment of the speaker, the life and death stakes surrounding the speech, and the rhetorical heights into which the speaker would spiral using irony and hyperbole to tease and toy the attentions of the audience, ripping them out of their state of passive indifference, and whipping them into a state of fury and frenzy, recognizing the shared goal that stood before them all, understanding its contextual significance, and taking bold and decisive action. I was memorizing these speeches one word, one phrase, one sentence at a time, putting myself into the shoes of the speaker, examining the tension implicit in the process of the speaking, gradually absorbing the manner in which the speaker was essentially dancing in the space of the listening of the audience. At first, these speeches seem like a wall of words, words that stand between ourselves and meaning. But untangling the spaghetti of the speaker's syntax and restringing it all back together brought about a connection to the life of the words, the speaker, and the audience. It made immediate something that was centuries old. The wall of the words was down, and the words themselves transformed into a live wire of emotional connection. I wanted to see if this process was repeatable. Would it be possible to revisit several moments of rhetorical greatness scattered through history, knocking down the walls between ourselves and this or that moment in time? And if it was possible to knock those walls down over a series of stops along the way, might that series of points not begin to resemble a line, a connection between ourselves and the overall arc of history? And so, about a year ago, I fed the phrase, the greatest speech of all time, into the Google. <laughs> and what you're going to see tonight is my collection of what the Google spat back out at me. I make no claims of balance or objectivity. If I chose a speech, it's probably because I like it. And largely, these all fit within our Western cultural heritage. You will, of course, notice the absence of any female speeches in tonight's collection. We can write that down either to being a result of the general suppression of the female voice over the centuries, or my own particular inability to effectively portray a woman. <laughs> but I thought it was important to take a look at the things that people used to care about, and to question whether we still care about those same things to such a degree today, and or if we ought not. Also, to look at how the extent of their caring got them caught up into the height of their rhetorical powers, and how that verbal expressiveness was such that it changed the world and left us with words that we would want to remember forever. Unfortunately, I have had to ruthlessly cut several of these speeches down in length, Ruth not being available to do the cutting, <laughs> as any number of these speeches might have taken up the entire hour all by themselves, I apologize to the original authors. <laughs>